This is the June website, which you can find at june.so. And uh, there's a lot of interactivity here I'm going to be covering, so there'll be a bit more uh, mousing around than from my usual reviews. Uh, the, the first thing I quite like is this box around both the login and the get started for free button. We often see these two things together in the uh, main navigation of a website, but uh, putting a box around them makes them feel quite related. And uh, they do quite, something quite nice when you start to scroll. This box will expand to the left and form the full navigation uh, to give all of these links a bit more contrast behind them as you scroll through the content. So I'll show you that now as I scroll, you can see it expands out to cover this. And it's quite easy to miss because it's just a white box against a white background that's expanding. You might not notice it, but it does help. So once I've scrolled down here, you can see that it's uh, stopping this text behind from making this text in the main navigation hard to read. So that's a nice touch. They've used the box both over here to form this group in the main navigation separate from the rest of these links. And then they've used that box as uh, for another purpose, which is to add contrast for this uh, sort of sticky navigation at the top. Uh, one of the things I like about this visual style a lot about June's direction here is that they've really committed to being quite fun, sort of whimsical. Uh, and the first thing that tells you that, especially if you look for these things, is this uh, extremely rounded and bubbly, almost balloon-like sans serif they're using for the main title. Uh, generally, it's, let's say, safer to use something that's quite standard, quite uh, plain, something you might not notice so much for something like a main headline, because that means it's going to sort of appeal to everyone. But here they've lent in a little bit to this idea of a very fun and sort of upbeat and playful company. And they've used a uh, sans serif typeface for the title here that, um, I mean, it's not hard to read or anything like that. It's uh, It's very clear, but it's also quite opinionated. And um, as someone who looks at websites all day, this uh, really jumps out at me. Uh, I also quite like that they've got the title over here on the left and then the uh, button on the right. Usually you'd put a button like that below the title, or that's the most common pattern I see. Uh, but that means they don't have to find something to fill this space on the right. Uh, the title, which introduces the product, is sort of nicely aligned with the button to get started and it pulls everything up on the page so that the, there's more space made for this large video they're trying to show you, which is already playing when you load the website. So they wanna probably show as much of that as they can, just so if you do click off, you've still seen some of the, the product in action. Now, uh, the next thing I quite like, which I'll show you as I scroll down, is uh, they've got this background color change, which is uh, full width on the page and similar to the box that expands in the main navigation, they're gonna use this for something else in a second. So as I scroll down, you'll see this full navigation, uh, full width background change to a container for the video and suddenly these tabs come in play. Uh, so you can click on these tabs to change which video you're seeing. They've got this nice color theme. So for ready to go reports, they've got this uh, sort of pink purple color scheme and that's gonna change the background here. And then the blue one's got this uh, blue background and so they're they're using quite simple color rules, but they're helping you appreciate or see which tab you've clicked on. And as it cycles through, they're using this as a title to tell you more about what the video is playing. Because these videos seem quite similar on the face of it. So you can follow this color essentially up to the tab with your eyes and realize, oh, so this thing that's surrounded by pink is about reporting. And this thing that's surrounded by blue is about customer profiles. It's very nicely sort of funnels your vision uh, if you're watching this video, it themes it with the uh, the tab colors at the top. So there's a theme here of sort of quite simple techniques that are used to, to good effect. Uh, you might have also seen that this um, the video shifted down, and that created more of a gap here, and then suddenly this hand-drawn element, the text with the arrow pointing at the um, the video, uh, comes in. So that, that fills the gap that was left by the, the video shifting down, which is quite nice, otherwise this might have felt like a bit empty. I wouldn't be surprised if they wanted to do this tab uh, sort of section here and then realized it left some space uh, on the left. Or maybe they had the tabs on the uh, the left originally and decided to move them to the right just so they could put this uh, text and arrow in here. Uh, but either way, it's quite nice because it, again, leans into that sort of fun, uh, friendly, slightly less professional, but still sort of you know, well-designed 
style they're going for with that hand handwritten text and the uh, hand drawn arrows they're reinforcing how uh, friendly and approachable they are as a company so as i scroll down here i think it's it's quite hard to tell let me just grab a um uh, I think what's happening here is that they've put a slight tilt on some of these uh, some of these logos, which I, I basically never seen in my life. So they've got the company logos and usually the websites will just put those in on a flat plane and uh, because they don't want to sort of do anything with the logos that would um, you know, mess with them. That, that's a, a bad thing to do. Uh, most companies don't like it if you play with their logo, but here they've just put this very slight tilt on the logos. You can see it just about here on Causal and there's on Passion Fruit as well. And uh, so that gives an even more sort of fun feel, but it's not necessarily one you'd notice straight away. And I didn't notice it the first time I looked at this website, but um, it reinforces that sort of slightly quirky uh, style they've gone for in an area where normally you wouldn't see any quirkiness at all. So that's, that's quite fun. Uh, down here, they've got this title and this section here, and uh, usually these buttons on the top, which you can interact with to change the content uh, in the container below, down here, usually you click them. But uh, in this case, they've made it very easy to see what's going on in each of these buttons. So it's purely a hover effect. And they've got this fun but simple animation where things come up at sort of different speeds uh, to show you what they're talking about when you hover over this thing. And so they've, they've reduced the friction on seeing this different content by making it a hover effect instead of a click. I'm sure on mobile, if they've got something similar, it would be activated with a click as well. But that's quite nice because you can get a lot more content in this space because it's all sort of just taking up this one container and you're reducing the friction so that people can look through that content quickly. The alternative is that you could make that, you know, a long list of containers with each one of these images shown one after the other. <clears throat> so there's no friction apart from scrolling to see all of that. But um, that means you take up a lot more space. And uh, the, the other end of that scale is you have to click on each of these so that it's a bit more friction to see it. And maybe you sort of stop trying after the third tab. But in this case, you've got um, five tabs. And actually, it's quite fun to mouse through them, see the new content because of this animation, because it's so easy to uh, hover over them rather than click them. Uh, you can also see here some nice color theming. They've got uh, this sort of pink icon and then the pink uh, <clears throat> outline around activation. The same with the green here and the green outline and blue here. And so that's just quite a nicer way to make it all feel coherent and make each of these sort of tabs, let's call them, feel slightly different. You give them a different color, but the active state reflects that. Uh, each of these containers has its own animation. And actually, they're not playing yet. I wonder if they start playing once I mouse over them. But if I mouse over this one, you can see it starts animating. And that little bounce effect you're seeing is almost letting you know that something's about to happen. So it's um, it's quite a nice way to get the animation started, maybe to draw your attention in, in case you mouse over it without really looking. Maybe you're looking over here somewhere, but you're mousing over here. That bounce maybe draws your attention in so that you can look over there in time for the animation to start. Uh, one thing I find interesting is that usually these uh, grids are intentionally very sort of orderly. You know, they have the same distance uh, between rows, between columns. They're, they're packed into this sort of tight square. Here, they've got a, a larger gap between these two, the blue and the pink container. And then because this one spills out of its container completely, this one down here is shifted down. And uh, I think maybe normally I wouldn't be a fan of this, but actually in this case, because of the visual style they've already sort of set up from the start. Uh, having this slightly off-kilter grid that uh, doesn't quite follow the rules sort of fits quite well with their, their visual style. Uh, the same down here, they, they've included this, another hand-drawn element uh, with some elements here that are sort of flying in off the screen into their container. This element up here is, uh, oh, they're sort of flying off as well. So they're showing you that they're sort of ignoring the rules there. And, um, that's quite nice. They've they've spilled out of the, the sort of more rigid container grid you'd normally see uh, as another way to show you how they're um, a bit different. So as you scroll down here, you can see that animation where everything splits apart. That's quite fun. 
Uh, I did notice that as I clicked through these, you get this um, bug, I think it is, where the text and the titles disappear. But this is a very recently released website, so that's probably just something they overlooked. Uh, but again, they've got this color theming here, which is quite nice. They've been using these sort of pastel accent colors throughout the website. And uh, they're not too bad as accent colors goes, and they're not bad to use this often because they're pastels, you know, they sort of sit in the background. And uh, that's a nice way to make the website feel colorful, but not too overwhelming. So you can add a lot of color as long as you make it a bit less saturated. And uh, this is a pretty standard technique these days, but you can also see here for each of these containers, they've used text that's a sort of darker version of the background. And that makes them all feel sort of, uh, they're all coherent, but they're also uh, feel coherent sort of internally. So the, the yellow container has this dark yellow text rather than having sort of black or, or gray text. Uh, that makes it feel sort of better designed quite simply, which is nice. Uh, I quite like when websites have blocks of text because it's a relatively bold thing to do, you know, especially if you've got all these containers uh, wrapping around things. It's all quite graphical, quite visual. And then suddenly if they introduce a few sort of standard plain paragraphs, that's uh, quite a nice break. So even though it seems relatively simple, it's um, simple relative to a lot of things that have been, been thrown at your eyeballs, right? So uh, this is quite a nice rest period. Maybe you take a moment to read through this. They've still kept some visual elements around the outside here that's sort of placed quite in quite a fun fashion. You know, they're not all lined up perfectly. Some of them have a slight tilt. Some of them are in little groups. And so it still feels sort of like fridge magnets rather than, you know, this orderly placing of, uh, of logos in boxes. Uh, I also like the tilt on this um, code block. And I, I quite like the fact that even though it is this code block and it's showing uh, what I assume is JavaScript code and they have color the text to highlight it, sort of syntax highlight it, the, uh, they still kept their chunky sort of balloon-like sans serif uh, for that section. They're relying on the, the dark background and the syntax highlighting to let you know it's code, as well as, you know, they mentioned that it's a snippet, right? So they don't have to use a, a monospace typeface here to let you know it's code. And this means that it just feels that much more branded. I also like this approach to testimonials. So they've got a testimonial in the center and then they've got these company logos around the outside. So you can click on each of these and um, see the difference uh, or, or see the different uh, testimonials. And it's quite nice that they've set up this container and they've surrounded it with this uh, collection of, of logos. I don't think I've seen this approach before. I might have seen similar approaches, but usually it's not this sort of full surround, which is quite fun. Uh, so they, they've got a nice um, sort of visual effect here with the clouds and the uh, boarding pass, along with the text, get on board in 30 minutes. So they didn't necessarily need to, I don't think they've had this sort of theme before now. They didn't necessarily need to go for this sort of airplane or uh, travel theme. And uh, I think they've not used it before. I'm just checking up here. But now for this last section, they've decided to go for this metaphor of getting on board, right? And so they, they've got the text, then they've got this um, sort of more specific visual cue that's a, a boarding pass. They've got this cloud in the background. They're using their brand purple as the blue sky, which is quite nice. Uh, you can see the, the purple here, for example, in this edit button. It's part of their brand. Uh, same with all these highlighted. But now they've used that sort of purpley blue as the, the background for the sky which they've reinforced with the cloud. So that's a great use, again, of sort of one visual technique used for two different purposes. It's a brand color, but also it's the sky in this. They're quite good at that, um, that sense of doing a lot with a little. And then down here, they've reinforced that with this uh, a different blue that sort of fades in. So that this reminds us of a, a gradient uh, in the sky, which is very sort of, the colors in the sky offer in, the, in this gradient form. So this works quite well, this white to blue. Uh, they've added the clouds here, which playfully cover their um, their links, sort of social links and things, as well as who they're backed by. And so that all you know reinforces the uh, the theme. 